We've been spending a great deal of time thinking about a campaign which is entitled to stop torture in healthcare. And this lack of access to pain relief, one can consider it as a form of torture. So when one does campaigns, uh, typically you don't offer the solution, you offer the problem. And then you ask the many, many stakeholders to think about what solutions they might make. You know, torture one considers as being um, uh, an act of commission, that people are doing it kind of intentionally. And I would be very sad to think that this was actually the case, that these, there are acts of intent to cause harm or to, to cause pain. There is a difference between torturing and not acting. Uh, but, well, it, the answer is whether you t your pain is from torture or from a natural cause that could be treated and is not treated, uh, I think the people experience probably uh, the same. The torture word is a big... People get very hung up in the torture word. I wouldn't use the word torturing uh, because um, it's, a, it's a very... It's a very hard word. It makes the, the hairs on my back stand up when I think of the, there being torture in healthcare facilities. One of my patients said, I all the time have this pain which I cannot bear. Every 10 minutes I feel as if somebody is putting a nail into my ear and banging it on a hammer. And this man goes through it for days, weeks, months. And that's absolute torture and it is torture because we are willfully refusing to do something about it. This man was on morphine and he was living a reasonably good life on morphine. And then we ran out of morphine. He came back twice, thrice. There was still no morphine. And he very quietly told us, I'll come back on Wednesday. I'll have a piece of rope with me. And I have identified the right kind of tree that I can easily climb. If you do not have morphine on Wednesday, I'm going to hang myself from that tree. The man did come back with a rope, but fortunately, thank God, we had morphine that Tuesday. So, I believe he meant it. What can be more degrading to a person than to have them in severe pain when they're dying? It, it is the equivalent to a sort of a modern day torture, even though it's not being carried out by a specific individual, it is torture by neglect. When I spoke to a human rights expert, who is a, someone who has interviewed many individuals who've been tortured, and I said, well, you know, in your experience, how would you make this comparison? Um, and he, he said, there is a real comparison, he said. Um, for those who are tortured, he said, at least when you talk to them, they had periods of time that they were tortured, and then it stopped, he said. But for these patients that I saw with significant pain, there was no stopping, and there was someone who could stop it. You know, there was a drug available. It could be made available. It was available in some places in that same city. So why would, why would I not call this torture to an individual? I think people are suffering. And should people be forced to suffer unnecessarily, and whether that's called torture, we can debate it. All around the world, people are suffering unnecessarily and they shouldn't have to.